So today we're going to be learning about service dogs and how service dogs can impact on your life and how service dogs can be very beneficial to certain individuals. I have a service dog. They're more known in the United Kingdom as assistance animals. And I find that my assistance dog, Scuba, who I'll insert a picture of now, he's very beneficial to me because he notices things that I don't. So, for example, he'll notice when I stop looking at people and he'll notice when I start dissociating and he'll be able to get me out of my dissociation by coming up to me, scratching me, pulling at me and stopping me from self-harming, from causing myself immense pain and one that he's not really supposed to do but he does quite well is when I overeat he will alert me to this by begging for food. So if he starts begging, I know I've eaten too much. And that, and then I will stop eating because he's now begging. So I don't eat too much because I know if I start overeating too much, he'll tell me off by begging. Um, but what I'm gonna be going on about in this video is I'm gonna be laying out just normal, normal pros and cons of having a service dog. I have, I have stolen half of these from people on a Facebook page and from a website which I will link down in the description. So thank you for doing this website, mate. You're a great person and I hope you see this video because it would be very good if you did. Um, so let's get on with the video. In this video, I'm also going to be referring quite a lot to the Assistance Dog, a guide for all businesses document, which I will also link down in the description. It's basically a 17 page document that explains how in England, the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, how they govern dogs, assistance dogs in the UK and how it all works there. So I'm gonna be using that quite a bit to explain how assistance dogs work in the UK and stuff like that. Assistance dogs can be owner trained, which is what my assistance dog is. He's an owner trained assistance dog. I'm doing it all by myself. And I think he's pretty good if I'm completely honest. For a dog that I've spent a year with, he's pretty bloody good. He's pretty good. Um, so there's owner trained, there's um, charity chain trained. So an owner trained assistance dog is basically a dog that a disabled person picks themselves and trains to their own standards, to their own requirements. So my disabilities, as I've said on a couple of videos, I have PTSD and autism so I struggle with quite a few things that's only two of my disabilities but I trained scuba to do what I want him to do so carrying my keys for me is something he does he also alerts to when I start self-harming so if I were to scratch myself on the arm he would come over and stop me from doing so he also alerts to when I start to cry he'll alert to that he also alerts to if I fall on the floor, he'll come and sit by me and make sure that I'm breathing still. If I'm not, he'll like give me a couple of licks to try and wake me up and stuff. Um, something that he also does is he puts himself between me and other people so that the other people back off, which doesn't really work because as you can see from this photo, He's adorable and people don't really get the fact that he's trying to get them to get away from me and they usually try and say hello to them to him and try and talk to him which obviously being autistic it's quite hard for me to turn around to someone and go could you not basically 
when you have an assistance dog, it is a good idea to carry around an ID booklet giving out information because a lot of the time if you go into say Morrison's or Sainsbury's or a shop they're going to turn around to you and go why have you got the dog in here unless you unless you can turn around to them and say I have a service dog this is my service dog a lot of the time which is quite funny they'll ask for proof you don't have to give them proof. It's really annoying when they ask me for proof and I sit there and go, I don't need to provide you it. And they go, well, can you leave anyway? Because that's discriminatory. The pros of having a service dog is your service dog will assist with your disability. The real reason that you need a service dog is because you have a disability. In order to get better with that disability, to be able to cope a little bit more with that disability, you might be able to train your dog to help you with it. Number two of a pro of what a service dog can provide. It betters your health. So having a service dog, you can get better at things that you might not be able to do right now. So being someone who has extreme anxiety outside, your dog might be able to help you in order to provide the comfort that you need so that if you do need to sit down and you do need to just relax in the corner with the dog, you can. Having an assistance dog isn't always, oh, do lolly, I'm carrying a dog with me. Sometimes people will get in your face about the fact that you have a dog with you despite you saying Sorry, don't touch him. He's working Please don't distract my dog. He's saving my life right now A lot of people will understand it But there will be some people that will turn around to you and say what so that means I can't touch him and You have to some somehow turn around to him and go. Yes, you can't touch him go away without saying it in that tone so something i do with scuba is if someone tries to say hello to him i will put myself in the way so i will stand there and go please don't touch him he's working and if they still try and touch him i'll go please can you not touch him in quite a more blunt tone so for example the other day or today rather i was at the pharmacy getting my medication and I had Scuba with me and he blocked a lady from standing too close to me. She thought that he meant to go and say hello to her. So she put her hand out towards him and I said, please don't do that, he's working. And she said, oh, so that means I can't say hello. And I was like, no, you can't say hello, he's working. It does say do not distract, do not pet on his harness. Luckily, this woman turned around and went, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't see it and walked away. So that's a lot better for me. Number three of owning a service dog or assistance dog, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it a service dog from now on because terms don't really matter. Um, a service dog will increase your independence. So I, I struggle to communicate. So having scuba there gives me a bit of confidence because a lot of the time I just imagine that I'm talking to him. And when I'm talking to him, I'm not stuttering. I'm not falling over my words i'm not doing it wrong in a way so it increases independence with that it also says on this website that not being able to function fully in one way or another can make independence almost impossible a service dog doing the things a person can't do for themselves allows for higher functioning in society for some people a service dog can even mean the difference between being able to function as part of a workforce or not or being able to go out and do their own shopping, their own laundry, get their own meals, etc. Medical alert dogs can also be the difference in getting approved for a driver's license or not. With my other dog, Buster. Buster is currently learning to help with the laundry. What he is learning to do is take the clothes out of the washing machine and put them in a basket, which is a lot easier for me if I just open the door and he gets it out. Number four on this list from Psychiatric Service Dog Information 
is having a service dog ensures disability is visible. Sometimes this can be true and sometimes it can't because a lot of what happens with myself is when I am out with Scuba working him in the nearby shopping centre people will often mistake me for a trainer because I don't look disabled when but when I do turn around to him and go no he's my service dog I'm training him for myself they go oh I didn't realise you were disabled that's okay but with society now a lot of disabilities are becoming less hidden so it's becoming a lot more people can have disabilities without you seeing them so it doesn't always mean that they have a limp or they're in a wheelchair so that's a lot better with society at the moment it also says on here that a service dog identifies the handler as someone with a disability who may need extra help or medical attention yes this can happen that a service dog identifies the handler as someone that is disabled but it can also provide difficulties because of course people might turn around to you and go oh are you training him for someone and you have to then explain that no you're not training him for someone you're training him for yourself number six on the pros is you learn a lot hell yeah do you learn a lot like hell i've learned that people don't understand that when you have you learn that people in today's society don't understand that when a dog has this on it for example it means don't touch the dog and it's really up to you to educate people and tell them that this means don't touch my dog because he's saving my life right now so please don't touch him and it just sort of you learn a lot from a dog you learn a hell of a lot through a dog You've learned to be a good person as well because of course you're not just caring for yourself you're caring for another being in the world and if you neglect it then you're neglecting yourself so only get a dog if you're gonna look after it it gives you a peace of mind that can be true with certain dogs but it can also make you feel a little bit uneasy because of course if that dog is trained to alert you to seizures and someone comes along and distracts you and then 20 minutes later you have a seizure and your dog hadn't alerted to it you're a bit wary of it because that person obviously took your dog out of its state of seeing that you were going into that episode and that you needed to get help or lie down or something like that which brings me on to the cons of having a service dog you get refused access to almost anywhere almost all of the time and people don't seem to understand that when they refuse you access because you have a dog with you that is saving your life they're being discriminatory no one seems to understand that there's been quite a few times when i've had to pull security guards over and say you do realize you're being discriminatory denying me access to this property is illegal. Even though they sit there and say, this is private property, you can't bring that dog in here. And I go, I can, because you have public access. If you give access to the public, I can legally bring my dog in here. The second, the second con on this list is you get access issues, which is the same as access confusion, really. You, a lot of the time they turn around and say, they turn around and say, no, I don't care. And you have to then explain it more no number three on this if on the cons list is it ensures that your disability is visible sometimes you don't want people to realize that you are disabled such as a work interview or something like that so in regards to psychiatric disabilities you don't really want people coming up to you and asking you what's wrong with you why have you got that what's what's wrong with you number five on the cons list you constantly get asked questions and get told by other people that they had a really good dog when they were younger and their dog was brilliant and they're and seeing your dog reminds them of their dog and they just dog 
dog. The amount of people that walk up to me and say, Oh, hello, puppy. Oh, I bet you can hear, I bet you can smell my dogs. Oh, I have dogs at home. Do you want me to talk to you about your dogs? And you say, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm in a rush here. I need to get through. And they go, oh, well, my dog, he's a Labrador and he's this and he's that. And you're just sitting there going, I don't really care, but I can't tell you that I don't care because it's rude. Something that a lovely person on Facebook has written to in regard, in response to someone else's questions about service dog has written. Something that often isn't spoken about on various resources is about the downsides of an, is of an assistance dog. Something that I find can be a big problem, especially for people needing a psychiatric assistance dog, opposed to a more physical issue such as guiding or wheelchair use. It doesn't matter what signs, jackets, badges you put on a dog, people will approach you in public and ask invasive personal questions. What does it do? What is wrong with you? Etc. People will want to touch the dog, distract them, tell you all about their dog they had 40 years ago and at home, etc. Which can get very annoying very quickly. You get stared at a lot. If you're in this, if you like being in the center of attention, it's perfectly fine because you've got a dog with you. But if you don't like being the center of attention and you don't like people walking up to you and asking you what the dog is for and stuff like that, I would recommend not getting one. It's time consuming. Having an assistance dog is extremely time consuming. Just today, I forgot exactly what it was that I was getting out of my car because my assistance dog wanted to get out of the car first. So I had to make sure that he had his lead on and all of that. And then I forgot what it was that I needed in my car. Although he pulled me back to my car, so he did, did kind of sort that out for me. You have to make sure that you've got the correct stuff for them. You've got to make sure that you've got boots for their paws for when the for when the roads have been gritted. Because if you're out walking your dog and they step on the salt, it will burn their paws. It will burn their poor little paws. Their poor little paws are going to get burn marks. And it's not gonna be good because they need their fluffy little balls. You have to make sure that they have enough to drink. They have to be, you have to be sure that they have had enough to eat for the day. You have to make sure that they have enough toilet breaks. And if you don't, then you're more likely to have an accident in public. You have to make sure that they're publicly trained to not urinate in public until you say the word empty. You have to be able to cope with people. You have to be able to cope with people saying it must be nice to take your pet everywhere. A good thing to question before you even look at getting an assistance dog is do you need one? Do you honestly 100% need one? Because if you don't, don't get one because they are a hell of a lot more time than you can think of. It's a hell of a lot more time than just having a pet dog at home. My Staffy is at home all of the time because he's not, he's not under any circumstance can he go outside, no. No, he doesn't have the right temperament for it. Scuba has to come everywhere with me. It is so much work walking into a place and explaining, this is my service dog, legally you have to let him come in. Because I guarantee you, you will do that at least three times a day. Unless you go to places regularly. For example, I go into the civic centre and I've only had to explain once that my dog is a service dog. Then they realised who I was and they haven't asked me since. But if I walk into... Tesco for example and I walk into a different Tesco the security guard will often walk up to me and say sorry you can't have that in here until I explain to them it's a service dog I need him for my health. You have to understand that getting a psychiatric, psychiatric assistance dog or a pad for short you will have to deal with people constantly invading your space constantly talking to you about the dog telling you about the awesome dog they had them when they were five trying to touch your dog trying to feed your dog speaking to your dog getting mad when you stop them, touching, feeding, distracting your dog, talking about it, talking about faking it. As I don't look disabled, there has been quite, there has been one or two instances where someone said you don't look disabled. A good thing to do when having an assistance dog is always make sure you are ready for it. I would not recommend to anyone under the age of 16 to even think about getting an assistance dog because it's not, 
it's not all you get to take your dog everywhere with you. It is a hell of a lot more than that because once you have an assistance dog, you become 100% in charge of that dog. That dog will not listen to anyone but you if you've trained it right. My dog, my dog Scuba, he won't sit unless I tell him to. A good example of a good example of a dog only listening to you is another YouTuber, Molly Burke. If you go to one of her videos about owning a guide dog, Gallop, her guide dog, will not sit unless she tells him to. Scuba will not sit unless I tell him to. He will not lie down for any family member but me. Having an assistance dog you have to remember that having an assistance dog is a really, really big responsibility. You have to feed it, you have to walk it, you have to pick up its poop all of the time. And no, you can't play off that you're blind unless you are actually blind. And not pick it up because that doesn't work. You have to always be responsible for the dog. You're not just caring for yourself, you're caring for another living being. And you have to make sure that you are looking after it is one of the most important things if you get an assistance dog or service dog you have to make sure that you look after it yourself you need to have a bond with that dog and you need to show it that you are its master and you have to show it that you are its best friend you want a service dog good you start feeding it you start walking it you do the stuff for that dog because it's not going to do anything for you unless you do it for them an example of this my mum's dog, Sweep, absolutely adores my mum, hates me, I never used to walk him. Scuba, I walk him, I feed him, I give him belly rubs, I tickle his ears, I give him a little chest tickles. He loves me, he does everything for me. Anything I ask him to do, he does it. But yeah, if you're going to get an assistance dog, be prepared for the amount of caring that you have to do. You have to always make sure that you are ready to have an assistance dog. Assistance dogs are a big responsibility. There are a lot of pros, there are a lot of cons regarding assistance dog. You have to always make sure that you are ready to have one and you have to do a lot more research into it as well. I've just given you 10 pros and cons, but there are a hell of a lot out there. There are certain dogs that cannot be service dogs. There are certain dogs that are made to be service dogs. You have to find the right one for you. I hope this video is very informative and I hope you get all the information out of it that you need to get out of it. And I hope it's been very educational and very helpful. And I hope you stick around to watch some more videos. Hopefully soon when a new video is gonna be coming out about mental health. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.